Hey, it's Matthew. So forgive me because the whiteboard is actually really dirty. Uh, I had some uh, marker on there and I tried to get it off and it just kind of smeared everywhere. But look, this is not financial advice. It is my opinion. I'm speaking to you as a minister, spiritually speaking, based on wisdom that is biblical. And I'm going to show you the most easiest, simplest strategy that I've experienced and I would do today if I had to start over and I wanted to build my portfolio and become very wealthy, this is what I would do. All right. Now, with that said, I'm not your financial advisor and this could actually uh, all go to zero because the risk of all of that is possible no matter what. So take that in mind. But here's what I would do. I always talk about living on the 10-10-10 principle. It is a biblical principle of prosperity based on this book called The Richest Man in Babylon. You know, I've tithed for nearly two decades now. I've seen the hand of God. I know the principle, the mechanics of it. I'll show you that in just a moment. And I know how these things work, the 10-10-10 from experience. So first of all, let's say you're getting $1,000 every paycheck, right? A tithe is 10% of that. So you take 10% of what you earn and you sow it to where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Now, here's the wisdom that I've learned that has become true in my experience. The seed that leaves your hand, that's your tithe. When you plant it with honor and love, with a grateful heart, you have to be knowing that you're supplying it to where you're getting your spiritual nourishment, knowing that all things come from God, omnipresent divine love, and that you know what you hear, smell, see, taste, and touch, the illusion of the five senses, is really the Adam dream. And what's really happening is God's direct love to you. And this opens up the windows of heaven so that you can receive the full blessing, like in Malachi 3.10. See, you are allowing God to prosper you in spite of your human reasoning. Big, big difference. So it never leaves your hand. It enters your future where it multiplies. It's amazing. Now, the other 10% is you save it. Now, I'm of the volition of mind that saving has to do with something that's going to hold its store of value. And when they've printed trillions and trillions and trillions of fiat dollars and they keep printing more and more and more, that debases the currency. It's actually a hidden form, a hidden tax, and it's actually a theft of your purchasing power. And so if you're holding 100 bucks today, if the cost of capital is you know 15 to 23 percent per annum per year, then you're losing that much spending power every year. So at the end of the year, you have about $75 worth of spending power. Is that what you want? Well, over the past 11 years straight, Bitcoin has been the fastest course in the race. It has been the best store of value, historically speaking. So it's considered hard money. It's considered gold 2.0. It has the most widely used distributed um, computer network in the world, really. And so in my opinion, I think Bitcoin is the new gold. It is the new hard money You know that the ancients did. They stored their money in gold. I think Bitcoin is the new hard money gold. So your 10% next would go into something like that. And in my opinion, you would store it cold, okay? You'd put it away, store your gold, like Ledger, Nano X, things like that, Trezor, and put it offline and hold it, hold your private keys, okay? That's for your, that's for your mind. See, what happens is when you are getting richer and richer, all right? Now, assuming Bitcoin goes up in, in value that it has historically year after year, every $100 you put in, you know, Bitcoin has grown at least about 200% a year, something like that. At the end of the year, maybe you have 200, maybe you have 400, who knows? But you have taken the initiative to prove to yourself that you have the discipline of saving money. It's a massive, massive shift in consciousness. You have to move from a debt-based, I must, you know, slave with my physical labor for the rest of my life to a wealth preservation and creation mindset. And these percentages are the key because they're principle-based and they're achievable, okay? 10% is achievable. Now, the next 10% is all about investing. That's going for the moon. That is building wealth. And so in my speculative opinion, based on my research and my experience, I think Ethereum, what Tika Tawari calls the next trillion dollar coin, by the way, the world computer, I think Ethereum is not only just a digital currency, but it is, in my opinion, like building digital real estate, having a digital real estate portfolio empire. So let me show you what I mean by that. But first I wanna tell you that, you know, the rest of the 70%, you wanna to try to live within those means, okay? You don't wanna live on 120% of your income, you're gonna go bankrupt, you're gonna be broke, you're gonna be poor. You wanna scale it down. You don't need to have the finest clothes and the best cars if you can't afford it. That's really the antithesis of prosperity. Prosperity is the ability to give and lend and your vibrational state when you're doing this will attract more prosperity to you. But if you're living 
in discord because you're living above your means, your vibrational state will push away all prosperity because you're always striving and you're always uh, you know, living in want. And want is lack. I want, I need, I need, I need. You don't want to do that. Scale it down. It's important because it's all your position of where you are setting your, your decisions every day. See, the difference between really wealthy people and people that have nothing is decision-based, the daily habits that they make. And see, these principles have stood the test of eons, all right? They are biblical. So now, this is what the strategy that I've discovered, which I think is far better than trading, you know, trading in and out of, because here's the deal. If you trade your cryptocurrencies, you have to incur a tax liability, right? You're you're selling, it's called, it's property, right? You're selling property. You're going to have to most likely have a capital gains tax. And each time you go in and out of those trades, it, you see you're losing money because you're paying fees to do that. And so I'm going to show you how to avoid all that. And I'm going to show you how to, you know, grow the value, especially during this bull market. See, it's really key that we're in a bull market. So this works in a bull market. So there's a bank called Nexo.io, N-E-X-O.io. All right, our ministry has been with them for quite a while and they have been extraordinary. Now, they are a licensed EU bank. They'll uh, secure your funds up to 300 and some million dollars. That's pretty cool because they can custody your crypto with fully bank licensed asset protection. Okay, that's cool. Now, why would you want to do that? Because they can create instant collateralized loans. Big, big difference. See, if you take a loan off of your, uh, your property, your collateral, that's not taxed in the same way. You know, it, essentially, if you listen to Tom Wheelwright, Rich Dad, Poor Dad's advisor, what he said is it's not taxed as income. Big, big difference, right? And you never sell your property. You don't ever want to sell the property. If you were buying Manhattan property, you want to keep that in your family lineage for generations. So you want to think generationally. So Ethereum, in my opinion, a world computer is that type of property, all right? Because all of the altcoin assets, all of the new technology in blockchain, you know, 90 plus percent of it is being, building, being built on Ethereum, okay? So let's say that last $100, you know, let's recap. $100 tithe, that's your 10%. That's to sow to God to receive the prosperity blessing, the Malachi 310, Melchizedek covenant, miracle, I call it. 10% save, right? 100 bucks, boom, right into Bitcoin, hard storage, bam. I'm disciplined, I'm saving, I'm getting richer and richer. Every day and every way, I'm getting richer and richer now. See? And then invest 100%, put it in the world computer, Ethereum, right? Digital real estate. If you go to nexo.io and you let them hold in custody your Ethereum, it's fully licensed bank, it's secured up to 300 plus million dollars. That's pretty cool. You give them all of your stuff so they know it's you, you know, your KYC, why not? And then it's like property, okay? You can borrow against it. They let you basically take up to 30%, I think, of your um, value in your assets as a loan, right? So I like to make sure I go, you know, I don't want to be under collateralized. So what I do is I go a little less than that. Let's say I take 25%. Well, I can take an instant loan, put it in US dollar currency, okay? And have it put right into my Nexo bank wallet within seconds, all right? So I have $100 in ETH. I can borrow $25 right off of that, put it into the US dollar currency, in my Nexo bank, right? And, and guess what? You know what's so cool about Nexo? They let me do an instant exchange and avoid all the ETH fees to trade it into ETH immediately. See, ETH has very high fees right now. It hasn't scaled yet. And so a typical transaction to do that might cost me 50 to $70. That would eat up the whole principle that I'm trying to transact with. But see, I can trade it for free with Nexo. Big, big advantage, right? Plus it's a loan. It's not considered income. And what am I going to do with it? I'm going to trade it right back into ETH and put it right back into Nexo. So now I don't have 100. I have 125 instantly of property value. Now, here's where the real kicker gets in. This is when it really gets exciting. Every day, as long as I'm holding 10% of my tokens in Nexo. So let me just recap this. If you have $100 in Ethereum, you have to have at least $10 in Nexo tokens. So you can buy Nexo tokens right through their uh, wallet mobile app. So what you do is you put, you know, $90 in ETH and put 10 of it into Nexo tokens. So you're carrying at least 10% of your value in Nexo tokens. And they'll show you how to do that. It's real simple. Now, what happens is, as long as I'm doing that, I get to earn percentage every day. Passive residual income. So what does it look like? If I have $100 in Ethereum, this world computer, digital real estate, it's like owning property. 
I just bought my first property. You know why it's so cool? Because it works just like property. Now I take the equity, I can take some equity out of that property and I can buy more property. Why would I want to do that? Because we're in a bull market. <laughs> because we're in a bull market. Now, if you go under collateralized, you could get liquidated, right? So I don't like to, you know, borrow to the full capacity. I like to take some and put it into more property. But here's where it gets super exciting. I get paid just like having renters every single day, a percentage on owning that in a fully licensed bank. Now, from my experience, this is better because it's uber simple. It's pretty secure. You know, I mean, you have the security of a licensed bank that's custodying your assets for your investments. You're saving your BTC in cold storage. You're owning the private keys of that. You're not giving that to anybody. See, but you do the research. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just telling you if I were to start from ground zero and I wanted to become a millionaire, multimillionaire, billionaire, or even the world's next trillionaire, depending on how much capital you're playing with, this is how I play the game. This is how I would play the game. Strategy. I'd follow the strategy to the T. Now, obviously, I think of everything else besides Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think of Bitcoin as gold 2.0. I think of Ethereum as the world computer, the ideal digital real estate in all of, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the best digital real estate on the planet, in my opinion. I think of everything else as venture capital, all right? High risk, maybe very high reward, but I wouldn't put any more, any more, not a dollar more than I could afford to risk if it went to zero. Now that applies to all of this, but based on the market cap, see Bitcoin has reached over a trillion dollar market cap. It has escaped, you see, the terminal velocity where it could go to zero like that overnight, right? It's over a trillion dollar beast right now. And in Ethereum, the experts, Tika Tuar and these guys are saying it's going to be the next trillion dollar asset. That may or may not happen, but I'm betting, speculating that the value of it, because it underlies the, all the new technology being built on it. It's like the railroad system of, you know, back when the railroads were being built. It's, it's very important because it moves around everything, right? That's how I look at it. And so in this new renaissance, this global digital renaissance, here's why I like digital real estate as opposed to physical real estate. I don't have to go fix a roof on my Ethereum. I don't have to kick out a bad tenant to earn my rent. I don't have to worry about what the state's going to do if I want to move and some laws change about my property, right? Of course, they could try to ban all this stuff. But you see what happens when a, an asset reaches over a trillion dollars usually they regulate and get on board with it. They don't try to outright ban it because it just doesn't make any sense. So you can do your own, you know, investigating on that. But this is how I play the game. It's so simple. And anybody can figure it out in a couple days. And I would take this approach over any, any other approach right now when it comes to the 10, 10, 10 principle. This is my specific exactly to the T what I would do again it's opinion not financial advice talk to your whoever does your finances if you need to um, and take it with a grain of salt because it's just one guy speaking to you with wisdom from the Bible and research that I've done all right bless